My name is Cyrus James Khan. I'm a digital artist, 3D generalist, and game developer. My life revolves around building worlds and using technology to create still artworks, motion pictures, and interactive experiences. As a sci-fi fanatic from an early age, I've always strived to remain on the cutting edge of technology to bring my fantasies to life. And today, I want to show you a glimpse into my futuristic world and what it means creating and navigating in what I describe to be the future of the Internet. This particular place is a gallery I've constructed using the platform on cyber. It's not built by brick and mortar, but by ones and zero. It's a virtual gallery, a place where I invite peers, co-workers, friends from all across the world to come take part in this virtual space, explore my artwork, and have real-time discussions. The beauty about the digital landscape is there's no limitations to the type of environments you're able to create. Take this cyberpunk city street, for example. It's a place that I consider an archive for all my artworks, but more so than that, it's a living, breathing environment where I put the same amount of detail from a puddle of water to the pedestrians walking around in the city streets. It's a place where you can truly immerse yourself in a digital experience. So what exactly am I showing you here? How are these particular 3D environments different from what we know already. Enter the metaverse. These environments are a culmination of concepts from science fiction merge with the latest advances of today's technology. I'm sure many of you are familiar with these works of fictions, these films and novels. They're all very different stories, but they all tell a common thread. They speak about this evolution, going away from two-dimensional web browsing experiences and instead leaping into fully immersed 3D worlds where you're able to partake in projects, collaborate with individuals, and engage online in an entirely new way. There's a lot happening in the metaverse right now, and I would like to show you just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Above me is a map of crypto voxels. This is currently one of the largest metaverses out there, and it's home to individuals, organizations, companies coming in, purchasing plots of lands to develop their venues. Those venues can be online shops, they can be co-working spaces, exchanges, even gallery spaces. And speaking of which, I would like to take an artist's perspective in this space and show you the stuff that is currently happening. This particular artwork above is a collage made by the artist Beeple. Beeple is not a traditional artist, he's a digital artist. He created this particular piece, collecting 12 years of work into a single image. And he was able to sell this particular piece for $69 million at Christie's back in March. Beeple has since become one of the highest valued artists alive today. And, and we're talking about someone here who's a digital artist, a field that had previously little to no recognition. We're seeing waves of this happen across the space. Underground artists, completely unknown, being shined in an entirely new light. We're also seeing collaborative projects, team projects, using procedural generation and leveraging technology to create never-before-seen collections of arts that enable a whole new take on the actual field. There's also galleries and marketplaces sprouting about that are offering curation, promotion, and a more streamlined access to these powerful new ecosystems. So let's look at the Beeple sale. How is anyone willing to put any sums of money into what is presumably a JPEG on the internet in an abstract 3D world? Well, I want to explore that. And the key word is unique. You see, the person who bought 
the Beeple artwork, did not purchase a JPEG online. He purchased a token. This token contains the signature of its original author, as well as the actual media, the artwork, being referenced on an external decentralized storage system. This can be better compared to a, pho a photograph. You could have a photographer that you really admire, and you could either print his photograph yourself, and you would own a copy of that photograph, or you could have, sold, uh, you could have bought the actual photograph from the photographer who printed it himself, signed his signature on top of it, instantly making it a one-of-one -one physical edition. In a similar way, these tokens represent a one-of-one -one signed digital edition. These tokens are called NFTs. They're created via programs called smart contracts, and they live on what are called blockchains. Now, these are complex terminologies I'm throwing around, but the basic idea is simple. A blockchain is simply a method to keep track of information, and it has given rise to these new networks that are not owned by a single institution or organization, but rather run by the laptops and computers from individuals from all across the globe, contributing to this network and earning cryptocurrencies for doing so. It's important to note that the blockchain itself is not a device, it's not a machine. As I mentioned, it is simply a method to keep track of information. I would like to bring an analogy from William Mugayar, and I'm paraphrasing here, but Mugayar kind of compared blockchain to the advent of Google Docs from, from Microsoft Word. You see, way back when we used Microsoft Word, we would work on a document offline, and if you had coworkers, you would save that document, email it to them, then they would have a copy of that document, they would do their edits and send it back to you. And although that's great, it's a very laborious and even comparable process. However, with Google Docs, we're all connecting to a single document that's distributed across all computers that everyone can tap into, that everyone can see the changes of, where you have a full record of the history, and in a similar way, this is how a blockchain functions. We're seeing artists tap into the potential of blockchain, way beyond the disruption it caused in the cryptocurrency world. In 2021, we're having a glimpse of what the future holds for this space. We have creatives, artists, developers, entrepreneurs coming into this space and tapping into the amazing proposals being brought forth. They're having access to a frictionless global market. They're able to overcome the duplication issue that has plagued digital fields for years and are actually able to create digital scarcity on these trustless, immutable networks that are not prone to any cheating or hacking. They're able to secure their intellectual property on something that would never be taken down, never be censored in that sense. They're able to bypass intrusive third parties and are able to tap into the full potential by connecting directly with their patronage, with their uh, collector base, with their clientele, without any friction. We're seeing uh, leaning away from commission-based business models and ones that are more focused on equity. And on top of it all, we are able to tap into a residual income offered by the nature of these technologies. Every time an NFT gets resold, its original author will earn his royalty. And this has been unprecedented in the digital world. There are many challenges along the way that have yet to be overcome, but we're seeing people from all walks of life coming together in this space, collaborating in new ways, and providing a new framework for the society of tomorrow. I firmly believe that blockchain technology and NFTs will radically change the world we live in, and if we steer it the right way, it will be for the best. The future is now, and I invite you to be a part of it. Thank you.